Good morning. Uh, I think uh, I think several people are uh, uh, in the same in the same frame of mind that I'm in. It is so wonderful. I'm having such a good time this morning, and I look at my watch and I oh, I better get started. So. Uh, Welcome to Bethesda Church this morning, whether you're here in person or joining us over the airways. We're glad to have you with us this morning. Uh, just a couple of announcements this morning. Um, we are glad to have, welcome uh, Pastor Mike Gates to be our speaker this morning. We're looking forward to seeing what the Lord has given him to uh, uh, that we need to hear here at Bethesda. Um, there are several announcements uh, in your bulletin, one is the uh, church council meeting tonight, and I've already uh, been asked a couple of times. Church council, most of us, for for years we knew it as administrative board. Same thing, same group, different different name, uh, church council. So uh, if you're on the church council, uh, hope that you'll be there tonight at 7 o'clock. Uh, trunk or treat coming up. Trunk or treat, our trunk or treat, and we've heard this morning that... Uh, uh, at the Bethesda men's group, some people are doing it this weekend before, some the weekend after. We, we have always had a tradition here. We, sell, we do trunk or treat on Halloween, so we do it on the 31st. We need candy, and if you don't know where to go buy candy or, or if that's not something you can do, if you'll see Sonia, she'll take your money and go buy it for you. So <laughs> either way, uh, we, uh, we appreciate it and just ask for your donations. Um, and I think that's it. That's all I've got. So I'm going to turn the service over to Tracy. Thanks, Dan. You didn't talk much this morning, so. <laughs> but the rest of us did, so that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Okay, if you will stand and sing with us, our first song will be My Hope is Built. That's on page 368. So grab your hymnals if you would like or look at the monitors, as I always tell you. So here we go. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest praise. Uh, next one is Seek Ye First. We'll do both verses of that. Amen. 
very much. You may be seated. about y'all but I'm about to burn up but anyway um that's probably just me <laughs> go outside um good morning how's everyone today good um you know laughing is good for the soul so I'm going to start out with a little story from last Sunday um I usually look and just see how hicky I sound on the video and um I got on there, and all I could see was me getting up and me sitting down. So I said, oh, my, I've said something that has offended somebody in my prayer. And so I texted Jeremy. I said, what have I done? And he said, you nor Dan were on there. Dan, did you know you were missing? So, something about this thing right here didn't come. Yeah, whatever that technical stuff is. He didn't take me out on purpose. He promised me he would never take me out unless, and even if somebody told him to. So anyway, enough of that. I just want to make y'all laugh today. Okay, we'll start with our prayer book. Let's see. We have um, the family of Georgiana, Georgiana Ray, which passed away on Thursday. An unspoken, a praise report, Bonnie Yates' birthdays today. I would sing, but you probably don't want me to. Um, Rachel Cole and family, Kim and Tim Rupard, um, Rupert, Kathy Smith which is Sarah Wood's mom. She fell. Um, Claude Peters and the family of Linda Santiago. Hopefully I got that right. And as always, we want to remember those that are listed in our bulletin from the past couple Sundays and in our shut-ins as well. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, is there any, sorry, is there any other prayer requests that I missed? I'd like to put in the book? Okay, let's go to the world in prayer. Lord, we lift all these names we have mentioned this morning and the unspoken. Lord, we pray that you will lay your hands upon all the sick. Wrap your arms around those that are dealing with the loss of a loved one. Give those that are dealing with struggles or burdens in their life the comfort and strength they need. Lord, help us to remember that faith is not just a feeling, it's a choice to trust in you. Even when our circumstances may just seem very grim, your faithful to, faithfulness to us by your love and your care for us, your protection on us, and also providing us with our every need. We are grateful for your endless blessings and the joy that comes from knowing you. Today, I can't go without saying that this is my favorite time of the year. Thank you so much for the season of fall. Just something about this time of the year makes me feel renewed. As the temperatures begin to drop and get cooler and the leaves are starting to turn, the pumpkins all around, it is just a beautiful sight and a beautiful time of the year. We thank you, Lord, for all the beauty and the love that created it. Today, we lift up Mike as he shares the message that you have laid on his heart. And together, let's pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward? They say sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. And right now, right now I'm losing bad. I've stood on this stage night after night, reminding the broken it'll be alright. But right now, Oh, right now I just can't It's easy to sing when there's nothing to bring me down But what will I say when I'm held to the flame like I am right now? They say it only takes a little faith to move a mountain. Well, good thing a little faith is all I have right now. God, when you choose to leave mountains unmovable, oh, give me the strength to be. my 
beso Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. Uh, Lord, we ask that you give Pastor Gates the words that you would have us to hear. Now that we offer this offering to you, Lord, we ask that you bless it and multiply it for your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Uh, it's my honor to uh, introduce Pastor Gates. For any of you that don't know Pastor Gates, uh, uh, Pastor Gates has been at, was at Faith uh, Church for 25 years, uh, and you know, from I, I, my early middle son joined Faith Church when he got married, and uh, I remember the first time I went to see Pastor Gates, uh, he said, he he said. Your son is so 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 great," he said. "I know he, I know his parents had to have a, a major influence on him. So he's he he kind of put the hurt on me. You know, I need I need to be a little more uh, better uh, because of that. And I think he that's something he, that part of his ministry is to make people want to be better. And you know, over the years I've been in a lot of his services. And the one thing that uh, I remember is that uh, he, he, he always does well in presenting Christ. And uh, he's, he, he, cares, he cares about people. And I'm going to put him back on the spot. He's always done, had a good sermon, and he's always spoke well uh, in, in any meetings. So we're going we're gonna to see if he can't do that again today for us. And, uh, but uh, he... Uh, if 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 any of most of you probably have met him sometime, we talked about him in our Sunday school class, and and most everybody has had some experience. You know, Mid, Midway, under his influence, is there's been a lot of good Christian things done in Midway, and uh, I know Pastor Gates had a had a hand in it, and a lot of meetings that I went to in in the community, uh, he was there supporting uh, God in in government and and in uh in the community and uh, uh I, I i introduce him as pastor gates because he's been a pastor to me and i think he'll be a pastor to you pastor gates it's really good to be here and i guess i do know a lot of you uh i uh probably met some of you at a restaurant uh, <laughs> My wife uh, went to heaven. Uh, we retired on the last day of December in 19. And uh, we took off for some people in the church, had some condos at the beach, so we were good there. And anyway, we were down, and she got the feeling kind of bad and said, well, I said, well, why don't we just go home and we'll go by Dr. Morgan's. And so anyway, we did, and Morgan said, Preacher, I think you need to go with Rhonda over to um, the hospital. Just let them check and see exactly what's going on. So, we, of course, I, I lived in that hospital because uh, for 25 years, as Jerry reminded you, I had the privilege. It wasn't a job. It was a privilege of preaching and teaching and pastoring people. Uh, and so, anyway, we were there, and... Uh, the doctors or one of the nurses said preacher I think everything's all right so I said dear well I'm gonna go get the car and we'll head for her home before I could get out the door uh, one of the nurses buzzed and said uh, pastor uh, whatever the doctor's name was uh, he wants to just visit with you and Rhonda well I, I've been in the hospital long enough to know they don't just come taking you to dinner and so anyway he walked in there and he looked at us and he said these words said uh, miss Rhonda <clears throat> I want you to know that we're 90 percent sure that you have pancreatic cancer we had no earthly idea of this 
and that it has metastasized to the liver. And before he could say a word, Rhonda said, Sir, that's perfectly all right. I know exactly where I'm going. Well, that doctor was so shook, he had to, he had to leave the room. And uh, anyway, uh, she uh, said, Please, honey, don't make me take chemo. Now, we've been helping so many people, you know, over the ministry. And, and so I said, dear, if you don't want to. And so we asked the doctor, how long do you think you have? And he said, preacher, sure y'all probably will have 90 good days uh, if you uh, don't take it. If she takes it, you'll probably have 180 days, but a lot of them she may be sick. Well, I might have graduated last in school, but I'm a little smarter to know who wants to be sick. I'll sign up for sick. Well, uh, so anyway, uh, we, uh, well, she wanted to get home right away. And so I have three boys, three boys, any, many, miny, and no mo. And so we, the boys ran home and got everything set up for her. And it's because she liked uh, flowers and birds. They put all them things around so she could see it. Well, they brought her home Monday at 1 p.m. Let me tell you this. Tuesday night at 10 p.m., she stepped into heaven. That was a blessing because she never, 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 never had the... I've helped so many people that have suffered miserably through issues, and, and what a joy it was. Uh, not that she's gone, because let me tell you something. If I could redo this deal, I would pay great attention to her. <laughs> I have no idea what an irony is, let alone how to turn it on. <laughs> the, the, the other thing is, I took pictures of exactly how she dressed me every Sunday. And people at church died laughing because whatever I'm wearing, kind of dresses up like Judy, whatever I'm wearing, she was wearing. Same identical color. Well, I leave the house very early every morning. I didn't have a clue until people started pointing that out. But we were married. We grew up in the same church in Houston, Texas. And we were married 53 years. And uh, that's a, and she probably wouldn't have been clapping. But uh, <laughs> she'd say, that's why I went to heaven. <laughs> but, but, but the truth of the matter is, we really had a wonderful time uh, of just enjoying each other. And just before we found out she was sick, one of my son's wife had twin little girls. Now, all Rhonda and I had were little boys. So we always were so glad to get these twins. And I told my son, I said, son, I'll give you $1,000, because my name's Gates, if you will name those girls Pearly and Golden. <laughs> my, now, my daughter-in-law wouldn't allow that. <laughs> but I still think that would have been a very clever move. <laughs> I appreciated the humor a few minutes ago. I, I, heard, I, I heard the story of a, a, of a man that kind of got uh, feeling bad. And so he, his foot was hurt, and so he goes to the doctor. And the doctor uh, says, uh, you got to go to this room. said, J just uh, take off your things and put, and put this gown on. And he said, all I've got is something wrong with my foot. And the nurse said, that's standard procedure. So he goes, and while he's in that room, he's complaining. I just cannot believe that I had to do this just to look at my foot. A guy in the next room said, shut up. Said, I'm here to repair the air conditioner. I have to do the same thing. <laughs> now, if you'll take your Bibles, God's holy, inspired, wonderful word, I want to read for you what I think is one of the most powerful passages of Scripture. And why I've thought of this, because when, when Jerry and Dan had talked to me and asked if we might come and share, and, and of course, it's a, actually, I've been helping a small Methodist church called Bethel over near on Burke Mill Road for, oh, I was supposed to be for like a month. I'm now into the seventh month. And, and, and uh, they're praying and searching just like you are. And so I thought, well, what might be really good for us today 
is to look at what God says about the kind of preaching and the kind of preachers we need. I think it's very important. This is a beautiful church, beautiful facilities. I love to see the way you worship. And I think the most important thing our churches need today are men of God who believe in God. Because it's a frightening thing to see what's happening in the world around us. So the message this morning is God's man. Follow along if you have your scriptures. I'm reading 1 Corinthians. Oh, these guys are good. Uh, it's magic. Okay. I actually do that, and there it appeared. You can follow along in the Bible or on the screen. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than man. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that many wise after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. Why did he do this? That no flesh should glory in his presence. That reminds me of what I would think the message topic should be, the kind of preaching we need today. Let's pray. Father, thank you for a precious group of people. I pray your blessings on them as only you can do. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will help them and guide them and direct them. I know, Lord, that you're more interested in Bethesda than anybody in this room. And I just pray that as they seek you, following the guidelines of your word, and when all else fails, reading the directions and following them, that you will bless them as only you can do. Thank you for these moments together. We'll never have them again, but we enjoy them this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. In these wild and weird and wicked days in which we live, I, I, I want you to understand that what is happening in churches all around us, the job of a pastor and a preacher is being rethought, revisited, revamped, and re-examined. Actually, in many of the churches that we've helped with, he's being pushed from the center of the platform to the wings in favor of celebrities, experts, and entertainers. But the old book still says, how shall they hear without a preacher? What kind of preacher do you need today? Well, <laughs> We need the same kind of preachers we've always needed. Nothing has changed. Just because we've split the atom and gone to the moon and now AI is a big word, it doesn't mean we need a new kind of preacher. <laughs> There's a lot of preaching going around over the country. And in some of these places, they do desperately need a new preacher. I heard of a preacher some years ago when haircuts were still selling for 50 cents. Some of us know what that is. When I arrived in 1994, a man in our church named Johnny Faust had Midway Barbershop. So I go over to the barbershop, and he said, Preacher, come by the shop. So I go there, and he charged me a finder's fee to find my hair. But, but I, I told him God only made a few perfect. The rest he had to cover. But, 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 but the truth of the matter is, the story goes that... Uh, there was a barber in the congregation, and as he was leaving the church that morning, he said to the preacher, said, Preacher, that was really a good sermon. said, You know what? <clears throat> I'll take it out in, in haircuts. And the preacher said, I'll have you know, I don't have any 50-cent sermons. <laughs> and the barber said, That's okay. I'll come several times. <laughs> First of all, we need anointed preachers. In Exodus chapter 30, there were three restrictions placed upon the priest. Upon man's flesh 
shall it not be poured. Whosoever compoundeth it shall not be allowed, and whosoever putteth any of it on a stranger shall be cut off from his people. There are some qualifications we've heard in the Word of God, and it reads this. There are not many wise, there are not many mighty, and not many noble have been called that no flesh should glory in itself. Now, when I think of what the Bible says that we just read, not many wise, and, and I think to myself, the reason is because they try to get to heaven head first instead of heart first. Now, the only thing that I know that has its head and heart together is cabbage, and you sure know cabbage. And then not many mighty. How many presidents of the United States can you think of whom you believe were born again, spirit-filled, New Testament Christians? You know, it's hard for the mighty to get into the kingdom as the glory. And then not many noble, glorying in their ancestry. You know, the trouble with ancestry is that it's like potatoes. The best part is usually under the ground. Now, why do you think not many wise, not many noble, not many uh, high, uh, mighty people? The reason is that no flesh should glory in itself. You see, God does not pour his anointing oil on old Adam. A preacher may be wrapped in the robes of learning. His study walls may be decked with diplomas. His home filled with souvenirs from many lands. He may wear all of the trappings of ecclesiastical prestige and patriotism but he cannot function without unction. If he tries, he will spend his time taxing down the runway and never taking off. So we need anointed preachers. The second thing we need is authoritative preachers. A <laughs> minister said not too long, we need to get away from authoritative preaching. I thought to myself, we need to get back to it. You know. My Lord taught as one having authority and not as the scribes. And a lot of the things I hear today sounds like the scribes, where there was no king in Israel and everybody was doing what was right in their own eyes. Folks, please listen. When authority goes out, anarchy comes in. My Lord met the devil not in his own power. He could have done that. Not in his own might. He could have done that. Not in his own name. He could have done that. But he met him with the word of God. It is written. It is written. It is written. And if he could defeat the devil with three verses out of the book of Deuteronomy, we ought to be able to defeat the devil with the whole Bible. What, what do you think? Don't be ashamed, church, of the old-time religion. There is not anything newer on the face of this earth. I have a New Testament about a new and living way that you enter into by a new birth that gives you a new name. It tells you about a new heaven and a new earth. And almost the last words in the New Testament is, Behold, I make all things new. No wonder the gospel is good news. Old time, new time, any time, all the time. Folks, God's not running an antique shop. For several years, we've run on the expression, tell it like it is. But Bethesda, you can't tell it like it is if you don't believe it like it was. If you don't believe that my Lord was virgin born, died for our sins, rose bodily from the grave, and that the scriptures are God breathed, then you can't preach it like it is because the way it was, it is, and the way it is, it always was. You can't preach Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever if you do not believe that what he was yesterday, he is now. now I know this sounds, preacher, we know all this stuff. <clears throat> Let me tell you something. I wish you could go with me to different circles. There are people just like us here today that come to church, sit in church, grew up in church, born in the church, and they sit there, and when they leave that door, 
They don't really have an understanding of what it really means to know Jesus Christ. You see, folks, there's a world of difference between the head knowledge and the heart knowledge. You see, for with the heart man believes to righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. And my prayer is, as I go around places and I see churches, I congratulate this church for some of the stands you have taken. God will bless you, and I can promise you that. But let me tell you something. You would be amazed how many people look at the Bible, look at the Scripture, and they try to massage it and make it something that they want and that they would like to see happening. You, you know, is it not sad that today it's almost the unpardonable sin to be dogmatic? Let me tell you something. I believe in being dogmatic. You probably already figured that out. When I go to a doctor, I want a dogmatic doctor. I don't want him to say, well, it could be this, or it could be that. I'll give you these pills, and if they'll kill you or heal you, come back and see me. No, I want a dogmatic doctor. I also want a dogmatic pilot. I, I travel a lot. I don't want this pilot. I get on this plane at Delta, and of course, Delta stands for don't expect luggage to arrive, because that's happened to me. <laughs> that's happened to me a lot. <laughs> but but I, I don't want I don't want to get on that plane and that pilot says, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Fasten your seat belts. And by the way, I've decided we're gonna try something new today. I'm just tired of all this regulations and rules. Nod me. I want the guy to say, I'm sitting down and you better sit down and you better understand that you're gonna follow my directions. Well, when I go to church, I don't want to hear an expert in the art of almost saying something. I don't want to come away from church feeling like I'd been out to dinner where they didn't serve anything but Cool Whip. You know, the preacher of today should not be apologetic. He should be without an inferiority complex. If anybody's embarrassed, it ought to be the other crowd, not us. William Jennings Bryan said in a speech that almost made him the president of the United States. Listen to what he said. The humblest citizen of the land, when clad in the armor of a righteous cause, is stronger than all the host of error. You know, we don't have to call in TV celebrities and athletic personalities put over the gospel. We need anointed men of God who are more interested in what God says the world is thinking. What difference does it make? Jesus says this, my ways are not your ways, nor my thoughts your thoughts. You know, they tell us that we need a new lingo today. If you go to some of these pastor meetings with these younger young people, it is amazing. Now for me, it's no problem going to the younger one because I'm on the other side of the ledger. So everywhere you go, I'm young at heart. <laughs> they tell us that we need a new lingo. We need to change our phraseology. Preacher, you don't have to preach of power from God. It used to be a problem, but now it's a hang-up. It used to be a blessing, but now it's a meaningful experience. They used to call it itch, but they scratch just the same. The church of Jesus Christ does not need to be an accompanist to anything. She's a soloist with her own song. The argument that the end justifies the means, here's what I believe, it forgets that the means determines the end. I, I get amused at some of the things that churches are doing today. So I'm not picking on churches. I decided to use some out of the book of Revelation so you'll understand. The Ichabod Memorial Church, for instance, packs them in with folk music. At over, at, at over at Ephesus, they say, we're gonna have a TV personality. At Pergamos, they bring in a fella who can play a fiddle, tap drums, and blow a harmonic all at the same time. 
Then Lady Osea, not to be outdone, has a talking horse. They ask him, how many commandments? He tapped his feet ten times. They ask him, how many disciples? Twelve times. And then some smart aleck said, how many hypocrites in the church? And he went in a dance on all fours. <laughs> Can't you just imagine and picture John the Baptist standing on the brink of Jordan offering free camel rides to those who bring the most people to be baptized? Anointed, authoritative. Thirdly, absolute. Someone once said of Spurgeon, the only colors Mr. Spurgeon knew were black and white. No minister should ever see that as an insult. You know, this is the day, you would agree with me, of relativism. Right used to be right. Wrong used to be wrong. Things were black and white. Now black and white had been smudged into an indefinite gray. Years ago, a, a very well-known minister said, why? Now just picture this. If I thought someone actually rose from the dead, I would shout it from the mountaintops. That's a preacher. Exactly, that's what he's supposed to be doing. Paul wrote, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. You see, we're dealing, folks, with absolutes. The absolute authority of the scriptures. I believe from Genesis 1 to Revelation chapter 22, verse 21, it is the inspired word of God. I believe that what he said, he meant, and what he meant, he said. I do not think we have the right to adjust and to think, well, you know, in this day and time, we, we uh, do it a little bit different. Let me tell you something. The absolute lordship of Jesus Christ the absolute sovereignty of God. That sense of urgency has been lost in much of our preaching today. Let me tell you, the man of God, who every church has, that stands behind the pulpit, he has no business saying, I would suggest to you today, or on the whole, I, I, I think, or I am almost persuaded, or research and speculation point us in this direction. Folks, that's not the purpose of the pulpit. Preachers are to say, thus saith the Lord. I will tell you this, far too dogmatic, doctrinal, and closed mind, the preacher is considered if he dare gets up and challenges us in lifestyles, or in beliefs, but every single one of us, starting right here through this whole building, we have to lay our lives down before the King of kings and Lord of lords. And God help us as we look into this community. What a gift God has given you guys. God help us as you try to reach people and see people come to know Christ. You know, I believe that anything that is alive grows. And I believe God will bless people who have that compassion to say, as for me, as a church, we believe in the faithfulness of God. We believe that what he put here in this book, he meant. I wonder how many of us really honestly even spend time in the Word of God. I heard about a, a, a new preacher who came into town, and so he was going around and visiting people. He knocked on the door, and uh, a little boy and his dad came to the door, and uh, uh, they welcomed him in, and as they sat down, the dad said to the little boy, said, Son, would you please go get the book that Dad loves the best? He came back with Sports Illustrated. Because you see, they don't even know and they don't even see that we believe in the Bible. Do you know one of the greatest gifts parents and grand? I look at a lot of us grandparents. Uh, I, 
I'd, if I knew that was so great, we'd have done that first. But I have eight grandkids, and, and we have the time of our life. They don't like to admit that I'm, I'm their pop, but we have the time of our life. I married my oldest one in Lancaster, PA, next month. He's marrying a, a daughter of a pastor there in Lancaster. They went to school together uh, at Word of Life in Shroon Lake, New York. And uh, I told him, I said, now, when I marry you, young man, I'm going to say to Noel, that's his wife-to-be, will you take him for worse and hope he gets better? But, 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 but the truth of the matter is, you, you know, what a privilege it is, isn't it, to love people, care for people, lift up people. I love during the prayer time and, and uh, the book that you have here where you, where you list people that you're praying for. You know, that's what we're supposed to do together. Why? That's absolutely following the Word of God. The Bible says, pray one for the other. The Bible says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, I'm not righteous except in his righteousness because there is none that doeth good. No, not one. I'm so thankful for spiritual words like justification that means God looks at me just as if I'd never sinned, or from the positive definition, just as if I'd always been righteous. That's our God. We want pastors, we want preachers, we want lay people in churches like yours to stand up and to say, we need anointed preachers. We need them very bad. We need absolute preachers telling us the absolute truth, not making it up. There's not a denomination in this world that should change what God says because what God said, he put down for all history. Did you realize that even today in the wicked world in which we live, I'm telling you something. I don't know about you, but I'm getting excited because I want you to know we're about to get out of this place. And to me, that's the most exciting thing. I, I have a lot of fun. I, I used to say, man, I, I hope I'm in the elevator at Forsyth and the Lord comes. Where'd he go? <laughs> my, my, my wife and I were flying from Houston, Texas to Seattle. And, and the plane was almost empty because I don't know why. We were fortune. So I said, dear, let's go in the back and go to sleep. So, you know, you get on, a, you get on an empty section and get the flight attendants to bring you a pillow and a blanket. Well, we did that. Well, guess what? Some of my people that I'd pastored for years, I must not have trained them. They looked around and thought, the rapture's come. Well, I thought, so, well, if it's come, why aren't you gone? But, 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 but you know, it, it, the truth is, it's getting close. If you can see the things that are happening in this world, I am telling you, and you don't know that it's close, you need to meet me at an altar. Well, do we have one? You need to meet me at the altar. I can't get that far down. I'll sit at the pew. And, and, and we need to make sure of that, that you know that you know you know. Jesus said, these things are written that you might know that you have eternal life. You don't have to go to lunch today. You don't have to go home today without knowing that wonderful truth. That's why we need preachers. We need teachers. We need worship leaders. We need music people who understand that what God wants is for us to allow him to minister through us to the whole world. Then we also need affectionate preachers. Even so, while our preaching must be authoritative, our preaching must be absolute. It's got to also be affectionate because here's what Ephesians says. Speak the truth in love. Some preachers preach the truth, but they do not do it so in love. Then there are those who speak in love, but they have absolutely no truth. They're the nicest people in the world. They preach all kinds of warm fuzzies, but they have no clue of what's right or wrong. See, when I leave church on Sunday, even if I'm the preacher, I want to go out to my car and know 
that God has spoken, not that man has spoken. I want to know that what was said in God's word challenges my heart. You, you see, when I prepare a message, I prepare it first for me and then to deliver to wherever God gives us that privilege. And that is something very important that we as God's people need to really be affectionate. Somewhere there's been got to be a happy mixture of both truth and love. The truth will keep you from dissolving into sentimentality. Love will keep you from hardening into severity. Truth will keep you from turning into sugar. Love will keep you from turning into vinegar. The Lord, you see, preserves his saints. He doesn't pickle them. There's a great difference, would you agree with me, between being right and wrong? I hope you do. One of the greatest illustrations that I've ever heard, a young couple was getting married, and along with the wedding gift, they called Western Union. Now, for you younger people, y'all don't even have a clue what that is. <laughs> you've, got, you've got cell phones that are much faster than the Western Union. But, but when I was growing up, we had Western Union. And, and, and along with the wedding gift, they call Western Union, and you can check this out later, so you'll say, well, did that preacher really say that? Yeah. But, but here is what, along with it, they said, please send 1 John 4, 18. So here comes the wedding gift. Here comes the Western Union, and you open it up, and 1 John 4, 18 said, Perfect love casteth out fear. That's wonderful for a new bride and groom. However, Western Union got it almost right. <laughs> Instead, they sent John 4.18. And if you read that, it says, Thou hast had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your own. <laughs> now, can you imagine opening up that Bible and looking at that, looking at a beautiful gift, and Western Union messed it up by one digit. You know what? There will be people who will miss heaven by a digit. Many will say in that day, didn't I do that? Didn't I preach? Didn't I play a piano? Didn't I use an instrument? Didn't I sing? Didn't I lead a congregation? And he will say, depart from me. I never knew you. Folks, my prayer for you is that you know him. Whom to know right. Is not only life, but life eternal. The fifth, and finally the last, and all God's people said yes. The kind of preaching we need today is apocalyptic. Why am I saying this? Some of you I know had just got back here in David Jeremiah, and I have to tell you, he's my favorite preacher alive today. I've got several dead ones I like. I like Adrian Rogers, I like Charles Stanley. Uh, I, and I, I, I like J. Vernon McGee, even though I don't like his voice. I like what he says. But the fifth and final preaching that we need today is what I've called apocalyptic. You see, this is the day of the beast and seals, the trumpets and the four horsemen, the harlot and the beast. It is to this world that preachers and churches must bring their messages. You must be certain of the message that you bring. L let me just share you what John writes to a world filled with pain and suffering. Here's what he proclaims. We proclaim to you eternal life. You see, it's not some fly-by night guru that pins these words. It is a disciple of Christ. John 1.14 writes, We beheld his glory. We saw it. John understood that the Spirit of God taught him. He was one of the 12 appointed by Christ 
called to be an apostle, anointed by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the good news. The message of John is this. On the face of this earth upon which you and I are living with all of its problems, all of its trials, all of his tribulations, the Son of God has come. John knew this to be true. He had seen him. He had heard him. He had examined him. He had touched him. And he had listened to him. Then John adds, because he was here, everything has changed. Folks, I believe that the Bible teaches this that the next event on God's calendar is the rapture of the church. That is what the Bible teaches, not Gates, not Jeremiah, not Stanley. It's what the Bible teaches. The Bible says as things begin to get worse, we're sitting here thinking, how much worse can it get? Now, you know, I'm not the Lord, okay? But if I was... You know when I'd come on Monday just before election? <laughs> I would say, I got it all figured out, fellas. <laughs> you go vote who you want. I'm out of this place. But let me tell you this. We need to be excited about that, don't we? I, I, I tell people all the time, we need to stay prayed up, packed up, and ready to get picked up because that's going to happen. I preached a funeral yesterday. I've got another one coming, I think, this week. People just keep dying to get into heaven. But I, uh, I, I preached this funeral, and I said to them, you know, I'm not looking for a hole in the ground. I'm looking for a hole in the sky. And if you know Jesus, Bethesda, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll walk with you regardless. You know, things are falling. Hey, folks, don't you think for a minute that Christians might not suffer? I travel over in third world countries. You ought to see how these dear people suffer. It is amazing. I, in fact, I just I cannot even believe the way that their lives are. But you know what? Some of them are the happiest people in all the world. You know why? because they have that blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of heaven divine. Think of that. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. That's his promise to us today, church family. And are you not happy today? I tell some people, if you're happy, please just notify your face. But are you not happy today that Jesus has it in the palm of his hand. And he says to Bethesda, he says to me and to you, I need men who are anointed, who are authoritative, who are absolute in their preaching, who are affectionate in their lifestyle, and who are apocalyptic, lifting up the fact that I am about to return. I'm excited. I hope you can tell that. I love that thought. No wonder you can look in the face of death and say, oh, death, where is your sting? Why? It's been swallowed up in victory. I share many times in services of, I don't call them funerals. In fact, I get on Davison and Hayworth Miller and, uh, uh, What's the guy's name up on there? Oh, uh, Worth Miller and uh, over on 109. Uh, J.C. Green. You know, I, I, I get on all the time. I said, would you please, in this deal, if you know they're a Christian, do not put died on my cemetery funeral. It's going to say transferred because I'm absent from a body. I'm present with the Lord. I, I tell them over at Planet Fitness, I'm a member because I'm old enough. The, the, only thing I, the only thing I do there is go to their easy chair and get the massage. <laughs> but, but, but the truth of the matter is this. 
I, you know, I tell them all the time that the Bible says this. Bodily exercise profiteth little. <laughs> That's my life verse. But, but one of these days, I won't need to have that exercise because the Lord himself will take us into his presence. My prayer is he'll take you. My prayer is that today God's word speaks to our heart. And I want to remind you of something so precious. Our God is faithful. He's faithful to his word. He's faithful to his children. He has said, I will never leave you. And I will never forsake you. First hand, I felt that. Two, three years ago, when unbelievable, he said to Rhonda, come home. I preached probably hundreds of funerals. And in fact, I've been at Faith Church so long, we've had over 200 funerals. I kept telling him, you know, you're just dying to get in. But, but, but the truth is, I preached so many funerals, but there's nothing like it when it's your own. And when she was laying in the hospital, I said, honey, who do you want to preach your funeral? She said, could you please do it? I, It'll be a privilege. Because I'll be able to say without a doubt, it's just until, until we meet again in the presence of the King of kings and Lord of lords. May God help us. May God give us the strength. And I would like for you, if you will, to join us as our team comes. And we're going to sing this song that I hope everybody knows. Just a couple of verses. Great is thy faithfulness. Not my faithfulness, not Bethesda's faithfulness, but great is thy faithfulness. And as you sing that, sing it to the Lord, not unto man. He enjoys us worshiping him. And someday, some of us people like myself that usually sit like this, we're going to be going like this. We're going to be saying, hallelujah. And we're going to jump. I tried one time thinking of the rapture. I can jump. I couldn't even get off the floor. <laughs> so I don't have to now, but one of these days I'm going to be out of here, buddy. And that's for absolute truth. So we're going to sing that. And do they stand? Do you have them stand? Okay, stand, please. I don't know all the regulations. <laughs> They told me I never learned them in faith either. <laughs> All right. Compassions they fail not as thou hast been, thou forever will be. Now sing it to him. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have need. And hath provided Great is thy faithfulness Lord unto me Pardon for sin And a peace that endureth Thine own dear presence To cheer and to guide Strength for today Morning by morning, new mercies I 
tonight, say amen. 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 If you don't, say oh me. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this precious church. I pray your blessings on them. I pray you will lead them and guide them and direct them. I pray that they will be a lighthouse into this community as we've heard of the outreach ministries they will be having even on the 31st or the 30th of this month where there will be many that come and may, as they come they see a church that's filled with people who love Jesus. And even as lay people in their own way they're anointed of God. They say to the Lord Jesus, we believe in the absolute truth of your word. We look at a world that is going apart, and we show affection. And then, Lord Jesus, we have a jump in our walk and in our step because we know that it won't be long, and we will be with you forever and ever. And all God's people said, God bless you. Have a blessed week, everyone. Jesus is mine.